over the trees. The voice of the Lord is over the mountains. The voice of the Lord Christ our majesty. The voice of the Lord is the glorious thunder. The voice of the Lord is over the world. The Lord did not only bring his own family and his own family that did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right. Hi everybody, my name is Mario. Today I'll be speaking on my life scripture and I believe it should be the world's life scripture. And we'll be reading from the book of Matthew chapter 4. In verse 1 it says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. The question I want to ask is, does God allow His people to be tempted? According to what we just read, it's apparently so. You are going to get tempted and tested. And the devil right now is tempting and testing millions of people. Right now, at this very, very moment. The devil tempted Adam and Eve when they were in the Garden of Eden, when God provided everything that they needed. Here the devil tests and tempts Jesus when he has nothing. The devil doesn't care if you have everything or if you have nothing. The devil will tempt the rich as well as the poor. Here he is called the tempter for a reason. In this verse, the Strong's Concordance says that the devil will make a trial of test for, for the purpose of ascertaining his or her quality or what he or, or she thinks or how he or she will behave themselves. He will test one maliciously, <laughs> believe me, and craftily to put to proof his or her feelings and judgments in order to prove his or her character. And if you're a sinner and you don't have God on your side, you don't stand a chance. But if you're a child of God, God has given you His Word and His Spirit to help you overcome the wiles of the devil. Verse 2. And when he had fasted for 40 days and for 40 nights afterwards, he was hungry. Another question I want to ask is, why did Jesus fast? He was God. Doesn't he have everything he needs already? Why did Jesus need to fast? Because there's a spiritual picture hidden in this verse. Fasting denies the body of food and fleshly desires, so the believer can make a concentrated effort towards the seeking and the pleasing of God. Jesus wasn't tempted uh, when he was in church, but when he was in a dry place, dehydrated, alone, tired, and hungry. I have to stress the importance of coming to church on a regular basis. Church is the water spout where the Holy Spirit and the Word of God is poured out. And that's what you need. You need the Spirit of God and the Word of God. The tempter of the devil does his dirty work when we are vulnerable and weak. When we are under emotional and physical stress or when we are uncertain about our future. But the devil also likes tempting us through our strengths, pride, wealth, and independence. And this church is here Wednesdays and Sundays to help strengthen these weak areas that you might have. So come to church. The spiritual picture of fasting right here, why did Jesus fast, is a picture of men's 
and women's free will being expressed. You can choose to come to God or not come to God. The freedom to express their will to say no to the life they are currently living and saying yes to the life that God has prepared for them in the spirit. I want to talk about the free will. The unchecked desires of the flesh is one of two things in these verses that can hinder a believer's effort towards the seeking and the pleasing of God. The second thing in these verses we just read that can hinder your progress is the devil. Once a person takes care of these two areas, it's going to be smooth sailing from now on. Let's read verse 3. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. Hmm. The statement here, the tempter. Here is the cause of every pain, every problem, every sickness, every sorrow. And look at me. And it's not God. God loves you. The devil is your enemy. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. The next verse says, For God did not send him uh, to destroy mankind but to destroy the works of the devil. John 3.8. First John 3.8. Excuse me. The devil said, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become bread. Temptation number one is the lust of the flesh. Jesus wasn't led up by the spirit to eat, but to fast. Eating food to satisfy hunger is normal. But it wasn't a time for eating, but a time to fast, fight, and overcome. Jesus did not use his power to change bread, I mean, to change stones, excuse me, to change stones into bread to satisfy a normal, God-given desire of hunger at the wrong time. If we have sex at the wrong time before we get married or rip, rip off a store for food because we are hungry, we are satisfying a God-given desire in the wrong way and at the wrong time. Many of our desires are good and come from God. But God wants us to have them and be content in them at the right time and in the right way. And it all boils down to the exercising of a person's free will. To do what God wants you to do. Jesus quoted a written scripture. Deuteronomy 8.3 Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Verse 4. Let me read verse 4. I'm sorry. But, he's, but he answered and said to the devil, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Did you know that Jesus had a free will? Yes. Luke, Luke 22, 42 records Jesus saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup from me, nevertheless... Not my will, but yours be done. And Jesus had to put his will into subjection, under subjection, to do the things God wanted him to do. The Greek translation for the word, word here means rhema. And this is what it, the definition of God of the Strongs, it says, that which is or has been spoken or uttered by the living voice, God. Words that are written on paper are just words written on a paper. But when it is given a voice by a person who is filled with the Spirit of God, it becomes alive and powerful. 
Hebrews 4, 12 says the word of God is living and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and of marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of a man's heart. Isaiah 55, 11 says, So shall my words be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return void, but accomplish what I please. Psalms 147, 15 says, He sends out His commands to the ends of the earth, and His word runs swiftly. Jesus quoted a written scripture, Deuteronomy 8, verse 3, Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Jesus was able to activate the word of God by speaking it into the atmosphere because he was led, filled with the Spirit of God, the living voice. And we who are baptized with the Holy Spirit, with the Bible evidence of speaking in tongues, the living voice, can and are to do the same when faced with the devil or anything that tries to hinder our walk with God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for the word of God and for his spirit. Let's read verses uh, 5 to verse 6 and 7. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you and in their hands they'll bear you up lest you dash your foot amongst the stones jesus said to him it is written again you shall not tempt the lord your god temptation number two is the pride of life here jesus not, did not fall into pride to show off his power for entertainment how did Jesus not fall into pride? It's simple. By putting pride into the subjection to God's will for his life. Not my will, but yours be done. And I want you to take notice here that the devil memorized scriptures. <laughs> He's really good at it. But his problem is he doesn't obey them. Jesus here also memorized scriptures, but he obeys them. And that is what gives a Christian power over the devil, obeying the word of God. Deuteronomy 6.16, Jesus gives voice to the written word of God and says, It is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And the devil had to change his tactics. Job 38 11 says when I said this far you may come but no further and here your proud waves must stop the devil had to stop <laughs> he can't go no further the written word is activated and begins to move work create when it is spoken and given a voice Mark 11, 22 says to have the God kind of faith. And whoever says unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt within his heart, but believe in those things he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Psalms 91, 2 says, I will say of the Lord that he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and in him will I trust. Thank you, Lord. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll never fail you. Let's read verses 8 and 9. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory, and he said to him, All these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. So with the eyes, Jesus is looking at all these riches, glory, here the devil tells Jesus to fall, fall down and worship me. And Jesus tells the devil the exact opposite. <laughs> and this temptation is temptation number three, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, 
the pride of life and the lust of the eyes. And Jesus here, I want you guys to take notice that he tells the devil the direct opposite of what the devil is saying to him. And this is another spiritual key. And Jesus speaks and quotes Deuteronomy 6.13, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Jesus again overcomes temptation number three, the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh, by putting his eyes into subjection to do God's will. And James 4, 7 says, I'm submitted to God, and the devil flees from me because I resist him in the name of Jesus. Okay, let's read verse 10. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord thy God, and him only you shall serve. And I want to stress the fact that Jesus spoke the direct opposite of what the devil was telling him to do. No, I'm not going to fall down and go, no, You worship me. You bow down to me. When the devil says you're condemned, you tell him the direct opposite. There is now, therefore, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. When the devil tells you you are sick, you tell him, by the, I was healed. <laughs> Not work, I was healed by the stripes of Jesus. When the devil tells you you're, you are going crazy, you tell the devil, he will keep me in peace, in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on the Lord. When the devil tells you you're, you're broke and you don't have any money, you tell the devil, he has given me all things that pertain unto life and to godliness. That's the proper way of battling the devil, which the word of God that contradicts what the devil is telling you. Again, I have to stress the importance of coming to church on a regular basis to learn scriptures and to have a, uh, a group of supporters cheering you on and also to learn about fear. False evidence appearing real. Let's read verse 11. Verse 11, he says, Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Jesus emerges as the victor. <laughs> and his cheering team, the angels sent by God, congratulates and cheers him on. That's way to go. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father God, I just want to thank you, Lord, for the word you have given us, Father God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Father, I lift up those people that might be watching, Father God, that have been uh, maliciously attacked, Father God, by the devil. Father, I lift them up before you, Father God. Thank you, Lord, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Any judgment, any harsh words that the devil might be speaking, Father God, you will strip them off, Father God, and render them harmless, ineffective against them, Father. Father, I pray for ministering spirits, Father God, to go into their homes, Father God, into their hearts, Father, and minister to them, comfort them, telling them that, that everything's going to be all right. Your faith will not fail. In Jesus' name, amen. The voice of the Lord is a glorious thunder. The voice of the Lord's over everything.